Hi guys. <laughs> um, hope you will be able to receive a lot of blessing. Although I'm giving this message from home, um, there are some things that through. Um, actually, my mom got COVID, and then my dad and myself also. There's one one survivor, though my aunt. <laughs> she hasn't gotten it yet, so um, we're kind of being careful with her. Um, but um, I hope that through, even though it's through Zoom, uh, you'll be able to uh, receive a lot of grace um, and also be able to receive the word that God has for us today. <clears throat> um, so <clears throat> uh, as I was, you know, going through the symptoms, uh, I'm a lot better now than yesterday. Yesterday was kind of the peak of the symptoms that I had. Um, but now I've gotten a lot better. Um, and now I'm have the leisure to, to think about, uh, what has happened the past couple of days. Uh, you know, um, when you're sick, you don't really want to eat anything. Um, you know, you, you lose your appetite, but one of, there was one thing that I really did enjoy though. And that is this, <laughs> um, fruit, <laughs> And I can't tell you that, you know, when I ate this, uh, it was so, so refreshing. Um, I don't really eat fruit on a a regular basis. Um, Bananas, like I'll eat it if it's there, but I usually don't eat that either. But it was um, uh, really, really refreshing. And um, as I was thinking about that, not only that, right, um, what else felt really refreshing that I do on a regular basis was, you know, washing my face with the cold water. <laughs> um, so I was thinking about this and I was like, uh, um, you know, some of these things uh, I usually wouldn't do on my own on a regular basis. Some of the things I do on a regular basis, but how come it feels so different, right? And what I would like to, what I would like to connect this kind of with is um, in the case of, the gospel. Um, Some people sometimes, and there was a point in my life too, where we're talking about Jesus Christ, we're talking about the gospel, um, we're talking about world evangelism every week, really, right? Um, And at times that can feel um, very bland, right? Um, Sometimes you don't receive a lot of grace from it. and, And every week, you're like, oh, it's the same message. Um, I know some people um, back in, in my dad's, uh, well, not only my dad's church, but uh, in our church, we have like the, um, what is it? The printout of the message, right? So I know some people that would be like, they'll read that and they're like, all right, I got what I'm going to list. Uh, the message is about, and then they don't really pay attention during the message. They're like, you know, I, I got, you know, I don't want to waste my time. <clears throat> So I want to ask the question, um, how is the gospel for you? Whenever you hear the gospel, whenever you hear about the message of Jesus Christ, how is that for you? Is it refreshing? Is it life-giving? Does it feel uh, like you receive a lot of grace? Or has it become something where it's just like, uh, it's the same message again? Uh, through my my experience with being sick at, at this time, and I'm very thankful because throughout the last three years, um, you know, God has protected me and I haven't gotten it. And now I have, but um, that's like, I mean, I haven't gotten it once since the whole three years, right? Um, so I'm very thankful for that. But even now, as I have COVID um, and my parents, now it's the time schedule for that, <laughs> for our family. <laughs> um, but even then, uh, I'm continuously confessing of, of uh, Christ. Um, when you're sick, or not only when you're sick, but let's just say when you're faced with a big problem, it's easy for us to uh, just have our focus there, right? When you're sick, you don't have a lot of strength. You don't want to do anything. Like, it's not that you don't want to do anything. It's you can't, right? You don't have the strength. Um, but even then, uh, 
you know, God put in my mind, God put in my heart. Uh, even to this, when I'm sick, Christ is the answer. I must hold on to him. I confess. I put, give this problem up before God. And so that's how I prayed, uh, even if it was a short time, right? Even though I couldn't ha- uh, uh, pray for a long time, uh, even for a short time, I confess that. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that, uh, so um, the first point, you know, that I want to mention is, is looking at ourselves and what is our relationship with gospel? Because gospel is a life-giving answer for our life, not just once when we accepted Christ, but every day, right? That's what we mentioned. We talk about enjoying Christ every day. And is that taking place in my life? Uh, Do I see the gospel as uh, this great, uh, you know, answer that I'm enjoying every day, uh, no matter what the circumstances are? Is that the case for me? Um, May you guys reflect on yourself. And if it's the case where it's not, uh, I hope that the rest of this message, you'll you'll realize um, uh, why that is. The second point is why uh, is the spiritual state of our lives uh, is going to determine whether you feel the gospel to be bland (laughs) or it's just the same message and you get frustrated with it or if you're able to see. Uh, it as something to be thankful for. And really, like when God opens your spiritual eyes, you'll be like, man, God, thank you so much. It's the same message. It's the same answer. But your state, your spiritual state will uh, very much affect how you respond to it. So I want to read uh, this Second Corinthians 12. Um, And hopefully you can see this. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 10. And the important thing is that um, we talk about problems being blessings to us. Um, but just because a problem comes to us doesn't mean that we will uh, be... Uh, the second part to that is uh, that we see Christ, that we see God's message to us. And then it becomes our blessing. It's not just, oh, problem comes, so it's blessing automatically, right? We need to see Christ in the midst of that. And we need to see what is God's message. So this is an example of this. It's Paul speaking here. Let's read 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. It says, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We'll also read Philippians 3, verse 7 through 9. Paul confesses, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. Um, In both of these answers, in other places of scripture, um, there's a common theme and a common phrase that Paul talks about. And he says, it's for the sake of Christ. Um, if it was for his sake, if he was living for himself, uh, he would not may- be able to make these confessions. That every, uh, If it was living for his sake, um, he would hold on to 
his background, he will hold on to uh, the greatness that he had attained in life. But how is he able to see it differently? Again, um, situation didn't change, uh, like himself, who he was and what he has learned and what his background didn't change. Um, what changed was he saw Christ and the meaning of his life changed, like how he saw his life changed. So this orange for me, right, is the same orange that I could have, uh, when I'm not sick, I can eat, but it would not be the same. It would not be the same refreshing, uh, the refreshing uh, experience I have of it would not be the same. So my state uh, physically too, right, uh, affects how I experience something. But spiritually speaking, it's, it's the same thing. Um, am I seeing these things that I go through as being for the sake of Christ? Or is it for, uh, is it only have to do with me? If it has to do with just me, then maybe I'll see the sickness and be like, like Paul, and like, God, may you take this away, right? Uh, may you take this problem away. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Why? For betterment of myself, right? Uh, if I come across a difficult situation at work or for school, right? You might wish and might see it as a frustrating thing, as something to, uh, you know, that <laughs> annoys you. And you wish if you had the choice, you choose. Yeah, if, that, if I can take, if this can get out of my life, yeah, I'll choose that. I'll choose that way. Or if there's a, if there's a, uh, uh, something that's beneficial for you, yeah, I'll choose that. Why? For myself. But for Paul, whether it was good or bad, it was for the sake of Christ. It was for the sake of what God desires. And that determined how he saw everything else. Even the suffering he went through, right? Uh, he was able to see it as something to give thanksgiving for. Why? Not because the problem's any easier, not because the problem's, uh, you know, is uh, enjoyable, but because he saw Christ, he's able to see also what God, uh, what God wants him to hold on to, his word. So when he had the thorn, what did, he, uh, what did God say to Paul? He said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And that's what he held on to. He held on to God's word. He held on to Christ. So for all of us, uh, I, I pray for all of us that we would hold on to this answer, not only hold on to this answer, but see everything through this answer. May this be uh, your perspective. May this be your new uh, uh, mindset of how you see everything. Um, <clears throat> uh, third point is, Uh, not only do we need to see see Christ, but we need to hold on to him as our answer. Um, I, can, I can realize now that this orange is really refreshing when I'm sick, <laughs> but I'm not going to enjoy it unless I eat it, right? Um, so for us, right, when we talk about... Uh, uh, holding on to Christ as our covenant continuously, even when it doesn't work, even when it feels like it's not helping work, you know, uh, why is that? Right. Because we need to, in order to experience, we have to be holding on to Christ. Right. If you're not holding on to Christ, then there is no means for you to enjoy him. Uh, when, whenever you are facing a problem, you're not holding on to Christ. Right. Um, there is God's grace that he might show, he might, he is uh, uh, guiding you. He is protecting you. Yes. But for you to really experience and, and enjoy the answer of Christ in your life, you have to hold on to him. So uh, we need to receive God's word. Yes. But we also need to see it in our life and also uh, not only see it in our life, but we also have to hold on to it. And how do we do that? We hold on to him through prayer. We enjoy him through prayer. Um, so it's not just one 
or the other. It can't just be prayer alone either, right? Pastor Zhang mentioned about, the, you know, that diagram of me, Christ, and then God, right? And if it's just prayer that you're holding on to, that's not the, it's not through Christ, right? Um, so it has to be together, though. Uh, that doesn't mean w- w- uh, when Pastor Zhang says uh, it must always be through Christ, that doesn't mean we don't pray. But fundamentally, uh, it is all prayer is inside of Christ, prayer within Christ. When we receive the word within Christ, everything is within Christ. Um, so may you guys restore those three, three aspects. It's so basic, you might think. Um, it is a thing we always mention before, but is it taking place? Is it taking place? Are you eating the orange? <laughs> Do you see? why you need the orange, right? Do you see why you need Christ in your life? Do you see what God's message for you is in the midst of the problem that you're facing? And take it one step at a time. But these three, uh, but what's for sure certain is these three things must take place before uh, for us to really uh, enjoy. So think about what is the problem? Take one problem in your life that you're facing. Do you see what God's message is? What is God's message in that? in that problem that he, he wants you to, to say to you, that he wants you to hear. And why is Christ the answer? Do you see that? Um, and what's left then is give thanksgiving before God, right? Inside of prayer, hold on to Christ as the answer. Uh, move forward in your life by, as you hold on to Christ. And that's what Paul, Apostle Paul did. He saw... Uh, First, his problem, I mean, that's what's on everybody's mind. But he turned to God. He asked God even to take it away. But he received God's word that his grace is sufficient. And he held on to, he held on to Christ as his life direction. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I pray that all of us would have this blessing in our life. Um, there's this one thing that um, I, I remember uh, hearing before, and, and that's this, is that one of the um, kind of frustrations or uh, unfortunate things is that of, uh, you know, somebody's like, why, why does the pastor always give the same message over and over again? And, uh, and I remember one, one time they said, it's because people are not, it's not taking place in people's lives. <laughs> and in, in order, if, if it was taking place in people's lives, then they could go on to the next message. Uh, they will, of course, always be talking about the gospel, but um, it's not taking place in people's lives. Um, if every single person in our, our church was enjoying deep prayer, enjoying about, uh, you know, um, enjoying Christ 24 seven, then maybe we will start to have a messages about t- a more message about 25 hours, the next step. Right. Um, but our current, our current time schedule of our church is 24 hour. We're, we're still not there yet. Right. Um, um, so you might, you might think like, why, when you think why is the same message, may you think about, well, maybe it's not taking place in my life. Maybe God want, is, is, uh, wanting to to say uh, give me this message because it's not taking place. Um, so what can we do then, right, uh, for it to start to take place? Um, and for our uh, <clears throat> uh, final final words for the conclusion of the message, may you take this as your prayer, as your um, uh, during this week, throughout this week, may you pray this before God. The first of all is, is God, uh, may you open my eyes to see Christ as the answer to my problems. Um, the thing is that there's a limitation for me as assistant pastor and for Pastor Zhang as a uh, pastor of, uh, of what we can do for you. Because at the end of the day, you need to hold on to Christ. Each individual needs to hold on to Christ. I cannot hold on to Christ for you in the midst of your problems, right? Um, what we can do is to be your background of prayer, right? We pray for you, but 
in your life, you need to hold on to Christ. So uh, the one who can do that work in your life is only God. May you pray before him, God, open my eyes. Without God's grace, we cannot see even the simplest thing. Uh, we wouldn't even known about Christ. We wouldn't even known about uh, that we were sinners. We would have been oblivious to it, like many people still are in the world. And that's by God's grace that we've come to know. But now ask God for this grace that we can continue to see Christ as the answer for our problems. The second is, is um, may your word that you give to me feel new and refreshing every single week. Every time I hear the gospel may not be something that us, uh, I heard this before. And, you know, uh, for your, those of you who have gone out to uh, evangelize in your fields before, you will know that this is a common response that people have to the gospel, right? When we, when we go and like, hey, we're here to share the gospel, you have five minutes that we can share. And they'll be like, oh, no, it's okay. Like, I, I've heard of the gospel before. I pray that none of you guys, none of us, will have that same response as we hear the gospel. May it always be new. May it always be uplifting and give us life and give us strength in our life that whenever we hear the gospel, we are overflowing with thanksgiving, that we're overflowing with strength to overcome any problem in our life. Um, and that's how we would respond to the gospel. The third prayer is, may you ask God, Help me to enjoy Christ in my life. Um, teach me how to enjoy Christ in my life. Um, in the scripture, it talks about how we have been given the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the helper who will continue to teach us, who will continue to guide us, who, uh, who is the one that is, uh, knows, you know, our hearts and also God's thoughts and all that, right? We've been given that Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is in us. So you can ask God, you know, maybe you don't know how to enjoy Christ. Maybe you're hearing about how to enjoy Christ, but you don't really understand. You ask God, God, help me to, <clears throat> God, help me to understand what it means to enjoy Christ. And he'll teach you, whether it be when you realize uh through realization as you listen to the word, or maybe it's through some uh, life uh, circumstances that you go through that cause you to hold on to Christ and experience the power of Christ in your life. But you have that blessing and privilege to pray and ask that before God, and he will answer our prayers. That's a blessing that we have as the children of God. And finally, it is, uh, I want to encourage all of you as you also have all these prayers, also may you have uh, a restoration of the covenantal prayer that we do in the beginning of worship. Um, but let it not just be a thing that we, we do every week, just in the beginning of worship. But may it be the, the thing that we do in our daily lives. And if you don't know why you do that, may you ask God. <laughs> ask God, really. May you find the reason. And we don't tell you guys to do covenantal prayer for no reason, right? We don't tell you to hold on to Christ as your covenant for no reason. It's because, uh, and I know some to some of you, this again, this might sound like, oh, this is, it's just words, right? But really, only Christ is the answer uh, for our lives, gospel reveals to us why that is the case, right? Um, Satan needs to be broken down in our life. And only Christ is, is the one who can overcome and bind Satan in our life. So this week, may you guys, uh, may God open your spirit, spiritual eyes to see the, uh, the reason why we need to hold on to Christ. And may you guys actually, um, uh, uh, actually hold on to him and ex experience uh, just like Apostle Paul, that we can really uh, become remnants to stake our lives for the sake of Christ, that we will 
find them, see the meaning, see the worth, the overwhelming worth that we would, we could be called to live for Christ on this earth. And I pray that you'll have that blessing uh, in your life. So let's pray. <laughs> Dear God, thank you so much that you have given us this tremendous blessing of being able to know Jesus Christ. Many people are still living uh, ignorant of how they're living under Satan and ignorant of uh, the answer that you have provided. Um, so we're so thankful that you have chosen us, that you have given us this answer of the gospel, allowed us to know the gospel, and that you continuously, continuously uh, share this gospel message, remind us every single week. Uh, we pray that you'd help us to open our spiritual eyes to see the worth of the gospel, the worth of Christ in our life, that we would overflow with thanksgiving, that we would overflow with uh, the peace and happiness that you have, you want to, us to experience and enjoy inside of Christ. We pray that you continue to raise us up as those who can not only enjoy this for ourselves, but also that we can spread this grace, spread this answer to those around us, to our families, to our friends, to strangers, to anyone who has not heard Christ, to anyone who still is not living, uh, holding on to and exp enjoying this answer of Christ. May we be the ones, the messengers, those who can proclaim this as witnesses. So help us to enjoy it in our own lives first so that we may be able to stand as witnesses uh, to the ends of the 237 nations. So we thank you for this blessing. May you continue to work in the remnant's lives and uh, in uh, helping them to enjoy and, uh, and, and hold on to Christ as their covenant. And we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.